Um, so I'm fully aware this morning that the only thing that is keeping you from a, a wonderful middle meal and friendship and fellowship is this sermon and a hymn and a few minutes of business. So I will be honest with you that truly I did not intend to preach very long today about this piece of scripture because uh, for my money this is a tag along to last week's sermon. So if um, everything that I say this morning doesn't make sense to you, go back and watch last week if you missed last week's worship. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to tie these two together. So um, while they are uh, two different pieces of scripture out of two different uh, books of the Bible, uh, I think that they, they tie together fairly well. So we're going to read this morning uh, from Romans 10, verses 5 through 15. This is uh, Paul's epistle to uh, the church at Rome, and it reads as follows. Moses writes about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does not do these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it's in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone <coughs> preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. So, you missed, if you weren't here last Sunday, or if you were, or if you're going to watch it on uh, YouTube, a, a great sermon. I'll just tell you that now. No, but I hope you remember this from last week's sermon. Peter made a claim. And do we remember what the claim was that he made? He made the claim that you can believe everything that you hear and see because I saw Jesus. We saw Jesus with our own two eyes. We can give testimony and witness. So while you may not have ever met Jesus or seen him, I have. So believe what I write and believe what others write and say about this man whom we call Jesus, whom we call our Lord and Savior. So Peter set the stage for us and we talked a lot about how do we believe what we believe and how we approach our relationship with Jesus knowing that the Gospels and the Bible in its entirety gives us insight as to who and what Jesus is is, will be, and was. Paul here is writing in the same vein, but now he's putting us in the position of Peter without the benefit of being a disciple who had given witness to Jesus Christ. But Paul is saying the same thing that Peter's saying, spun a little different. How can people come to know Jesus unless they are told about him? And then when we tell someone about Jesus, how are they to believe if we can't say firsthand how Jesus is working in our lives? So while Peter said, you disciples, you new disciples like Shonda and myself and Becky and 
Connie and anybody who is this new type of disciple, these new Christians, the uh, present day Christians and disciples, how, how are they going to know about Jesus? They're going to know about Jesus because they're going to read firsthand what I have written. They're going to read firsthand that I have seen Jesus and I have seen these miracles in which I write. And I can testify to the things that are written in the Gospels because I was there. Believe me when I tell you these things. So we're put in a position where we didn't see those things, but we believe those things. And the only way that we can show others, particularly non-believers, is to show them how Jesus is working in our lives. So why I wasted a lot of time at the beginning of worship following through on uh, the admonishment that I normally get with regard to my health care and other things going on in my life, I gave you that testimony because I can't show you the miracles that Jesus performed. I can teach you about them. I can preach them to you. But I can tell you how Jesus and God manifest themselves in my life in such a way that only they could do. And because of that, I can go to a non-believer. Because of that, I can go to other believers. Because of that, I can go to folks that are struggling. Because of that, I can tell people what happened to me in one day in a five-hour period at a major hospital doesn't happen. It never happens. For that matter, it can't happen because of the nature of the beast. You got too many people or too many specialists. The campus is too big. They're too busy. There's too many patients. There's too much going on for that all to take place. And even more importantly, all of those folks are too busy. And two of the three of them who I relied on did stuff that they never do. Never. And so that's the testimony. So that provides hope. Because when you string all that together, there are coincidences. Always, but not 10 of them, not 12 of them, not 15 of them strung together. One or two, yeah. 15, no. So we've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable knowing that we don't have a first-hand account that's us, but we do have a first-hand account that was Peter. And who was John? And who was Mark? Right on down the line. So how do we, as Christians, do this? Well, it's very clear. I'll sum it up to you. Paul says, we've got to preach the gospel. It's got to be in our mouth. It's got to be told. And it has to be told over and over and it has to be is such that, get this, and I know it says people who have preached, but I've told all y'all, all y'all are preachers, right? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news? What he's really trying to say is how blessed and awesome it is to God when we give him thanks and praise. And when we identify Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, how beautiful is that? There's nothing else, church, that you can do as a Christian that is more important or powerful than to share the gospel with ourselves, with the community, with believers, with non-believers, with strangers, and with friends. Because how are they going to know if we're not told the reason the Bible exists in and of itself is so that, the, and you know I don't like this word, but I, I use it because I don't have any better words. The stories that are contained within scripture and the laws and the edicts and the direction that's in, in, included in the Bible was put there so that we could be taught. And then, then we can teach. I'll leave you with this. I told you I wasn't going to preach very long today. In my main profession, I am a teacher. And you all are teachers too. But you can't teach what you don't know. 
I spent about two hours yesterday talking with a guy that I used to know when he used to change tires. He now is the chief mechanic and runs all of the ice making machines for Valley Ice. He went from a guy making uh, $10 an hour to 95 grand a year. And he talked to me about all the schooling and training he went to. So this is a guy that changed tires for 18 years, then goes and gets some education, learns a specific trade, and then uh, goes about uh, having a, a well-paying job. And he was so excited about explaining it to me because I remember him all those years and when I lived in Mount Jackson, changing tires until he was, you know, uh, not so young man anymore. And the more he talked to me, I could envision how all this stuff works. It's the same way when I talk to Will. It's the same way when I talk to Fred. It's the same way when I talk to Tombo, because they have these skills in which it's this whole, they're experts at what they do. And so when you're an expert at what you do, it's easy to teach it, because it just rolls right off of you. And Will's not the most talkative person in the world, but if you listen to him about how thingamabobs work and these things go together, it just comes right out of him. Why? Because he's an expert at it. If you want to know about telecommunications, sit with Fred. He can amaze you with it, but at the same time, it's just part of it. And it just rolls out of him, naturally. Ask him a question, you can get the whole shit match. Do you see where I'm going with this? How is the gospel going to roll out of you like it's part of you unless what? You have the gospel. How is it going to come out of your mouth unless you know it to speak it? How is the good news going to be portrayed? How is Jesus going to be glorified? How are people going to get saved if we don't have it internalized in us that it just pours out? Because that's really what we're called to do. And Paul is reminding the church, and I will remind my church today, the gospel has to be in our mouths. And then it has to come out of our mouths in such a way that not only is it believable, but it is moving. I, I know that you know I don't like surgery. And I know that you know I don't like, like all the medical stuff. But I hope you're encouraged this morning because I have a smile on my face and I'm at peace with the fact that a lot of good stuff lined up for me. And the Lord has his way in it. But if I don't tell you that and I just come and I stand before you and I say, hey, I know y'all been praying for me. Thank you. Peace to all y'all. I'm good. What does that really tell you? That's not a testimony or witness. That's just kind of an acknowledgement. Don't acknowledge Jesus. Testify on his behalf. Amen? Amen. Sean, what are we going to say? Listen. God of grace and God of glory. It's 577 in your head. I think you're still going there, probably. <coughs>